Okay, I guess I might be in the second hour of videos. Well, maybe not quite, but maybe quite, maybe, I don't know. The Bitcoin price down to 64.55. That worked out to be a very small buy of uh, just $32 worth of Bitcoin. If it goes down to 6,000, I'll make another small buy. And that's what I like to do. Make small trades, big trades. I still got my buy orders in at 3,000. I mentioned earlier today, it's big decision make. It's, we're looking at a lot of the D-Day, decision day kind of moments. And I see the sell-off. Oh, the rising average is coming in place. Bullishly, it could sell even off to 61. Maybe this thing could go up, it could go down. And that's exactly what I like. The maybe on either or. Basically in position either way. Currently, Binance is under maintenance. And I'm just looking at a few codes and I'm thinking, you know what? I can afford to get into one more alt because of the 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 trade gains on SIS has been... I basically doubled its exposure just from the in and outs. Meaning that's like the funds that I would put to like one full entry point. And I found an interesting code and I'm considering uh, looking more into it. And I'm intrigued by the Binance exchange, so that's what I was looking at. And it's got high volume, and i got to presume that the Bitcoin exchange would as well. Uh, as we look at this on the daily chart. So this is the volume that occurred today. This is a new day, just in its second hour right now. For If you look at the one minute, it should not be changing because... Well, this says 2023. The time is 2040-something. The markets, the trading is offline right now due to system maintenance. Whether it has anything to do with what went on with SIS today, I don't know. Nor do I care as long as, of course, the markets are functioning and working in its due time. That's all great with me. But what's going on with this volume in here as it's had a decent downtrend. I want to get into a position that's down and te technically speaking from point high at, in this case, uh, 6,700 basis points to a low of a thousand. This went down six point whatever times, still four times from its current level. So is this a rally to take serious? I do this with a maybe. I look at this on the hour time frame. This rally just occurred right now, but this is what's interesting. It's already came back to where it came from. So I'm thinking if it's a time to buy, this isn't a bad time to, the way I like to trade, to enter into a position around this price. And I would most likely trade this against Binance. What's, I doubt it's uh, traded any, well, it's trading against Ethereum, of course, and Bitcoin. But let's take a look against the uh, Bitcoin exchange. Oh. Next, this is against the dollar, but there's no T on the USD. That's well, Bitfinex. That makes sense. That makes total sense. Now, uh, Binance. Let's take a look at this against Bitcoin. So it had it had its big volume too. Now this is one of those cases where someone just bought big. Now this is what I find very interesting because I've seen this happen with many charts before, where you're in a downtrend, and of course this has been in such a case that you get early in the end of a downtrend in a neutral market but definitely not in a bull market where you get these types of buys where it comes back to where it comes from really quickly and i try to think on a fundamental level maybe it means something in the area to which okay this is a spot where Somebody knows something in advance. These are the early people. And oftentimes these early people are, might not be like the traders per se, but the, inside the develop, like know the developing team. No, no, it's whatever reason. I don't care about that reason, but just I think of the fundamentals or the uh, situation that they're probably very basic traders and thus they make the mistake in buying a lot in this market up because they have decent amount of funds. But what I've often seen in a situations like this, and even you might even get another one like this where you come back and you trade within the range, maybe a little bit of an uptrend. Maybe you get another similar sort of deal. And then just later on, it just does something like that. So that's some of the things that I've been thinking about as well. So there's a decent chance that 
I can add this into my portfolio just simply because of the gain today in SYS. That gives me extra BNB to uh, place uh, buy orders, even the instant buy order. I could probably buy half of it with Bitcoin. I mean, it works out mathematically for me that I could easily buy half of it with Bitcoin, half of it with BNB to get an entry open position and then still have base orders available. I use Bitcoin and BNB as base currency and still have buy orders available where I, well, a lot of times when I get in a new position, I have to find funds somewhere because I got a balance to the point where my base currency everywhere where I trade is basically as minimum as I need it as possible. So it makes it difficult to enter a new position or upgrade a position unless I add funds or sell another position. Let's take a look at this again via the Binance Exchange. And, and if, I'll talk about how the play would be. I enter the coins, but how I buy it is meaningless because once I buy, I got those coins that say my available balance, so many coins. So I look at this and we look at the I move difference again, 60 down to 10 for one like a 6x. This is the extreme volatility that I'm really, really looking for. And different type of strategies I can do for an entry here because I know on a technical analysis level, as I'm looking at this, it's had this move. It's real or it's not. If it's not, as long as it's a coin, that, if it's bad, that is, that's going to have decent rallies along the way, then I should still trade it fine. Because if it fails, I could consider putting a buy here and I'm getting it at a difference of buying at 15 and a new buy at 15. A lot of times I'll play for 20% moves. So this works great within my volatility and I wouldn't buy that big. Well, normally I wouldn't anyway, I just buy what I need based on the percentage, but buy a little bit here and then I realize on a significant leg lower, it's going to go much lower than the 10 handle. So I'd be looking to most likely enter again at about 70 on the Satoshi or a 30% reduction. This is where I'd be looking for future buys as I stand in here. Short term, of course, we're, I'm look, still looking at this 18. This could be a little early in the play because bullishly you can do something like this, come back and do that. But if you're thinking about that from this point, do you mind buying now knowing that if this happens, you just, okay, hold on, do it and... You're fine with it. That's some of the thinking that I do as well. But you're going to be looking at, okay, where would I, how would I be playing this within sell orders? I like to have three. One, for a decent size op opening sell, where uh, if you look at, say, just even selling it around up here, which is decently above where that line is, where it went up to. When you're looking at 26, I can put a ray in. So if you sell around here, this is like, okay, can come up to here, conservatively, meaning better chances of getting the sale. If you're doing something like this, say 23.6, you're immediately getting a difference of close to 50% of a basis point difference. And I like to sell for even 20% gains as well. So I could do two strategies. I have a very small sell for a 20 gain and play just for the 50. I could just go, and I might even, I'm not, I don't think I'd want to play for the 20% gain. I think I would play for a first sell order to come here. So then, let's just assume for every 100 units that I buy here, what would be the amount that I would sell here? Well, the math I do in my head, and I do this really quickly, and I don't even get exact numbers, but decent enough calculations. So I'm buying at 15, and I'm selling at 23 change. Again, that's eight, that's 50%. So if, if, if I have, say, two units of something that becomes three, then one third of it would keep it at fair value. So 25 to 28 would be good. And if you're looking for a market that's got major upside potential, then lower that number more so. Instead of 28, go 25. Even 20 or 22 would be fine as well because you see a lot of future upside. Now, in a spot like this, I could go super, super aggressive with the second sell order because normally what I would look for, first sell order might only be a 20 or 25% move. 
then the next one from that point on, I'd be looking for a 40, 50, 60% move. Well, if I'm moving up towards here, the previous high, I'd be looking at close to triple, but a two and a half move. And oftentimes it comes close to this area, which is where I'd be leaning towards. I could put a sell order on say this point here. So before I was getting um, a 50% move. Now from here, I would be getting, well, about a 50% move again. So you know what? With the fast moves that they have, if it's gonna go wild, yeah, let's play for a move like this. Let's, if we go to say a pierce here at a 52, now we're doing better than double. Heck, we could even do a little more conservative and maybe go 48. That's still barely double. So if I sold 25, that would leave me with 75. So therefore, I can technically on a double move, sell half and be at fair value. So half of 75 is like 37 and change. So if you do something like say 30 or even 35, then you're in uh, very good shape and you get a very good sale. You would have a sale that would be worth like four or five times more here. And you get 35 is totally in play as well. So now you're left with 45 tokens. I'm not going to put a line in for the next, but this is where you just put it. I put an insane number, especially when I see what happened today with uh, Syscoin against Bitcoin, where it went up to like eh, just uh, uh, over half a million dollars value for like one small trade. Basically, a des all everything priced in Bitcoin is decimals. It went up to 98. Just sick, but great for those who sold. So therefore, because of that type of thick, the th markets do that. Why would I want to just say, leave my coins in balance? What, what are they going to do? They're just going to stay in balance. That means I can quickly sell them. I can quickly put a buy or a sell order anytime. I can quickly withdraw them without having to push any buttons. Okay, so be it. Who cares? But instead of having them uh, just as it is, I could just instead say, how about with my 45 left, sell all 45 I'd say, well, my last sell was 0.04, so let's go 0. Point, uh, depending on how aggressive you want, I can go to 0.25, I can go 0. 0.67, and that would be fine for me. And you get an insane amount, an insane amount based on where you're playing. And if you get it, you'd be like, party, maybe open some champagne that night. Maybe you're going to have an amazing feast, get your whatever your favorite food is. For me, I'd get like the, obviously I'm a steak and potatoes kind of person. I'd be getting a really nice one myself. So that's the type of uh, situation you're looking for. But it's like a no risk gamble. It's like playing a casino game and you did well on the slot machine. You played a tournament and you won it. Or you played the lottery and you got a whole bunch of numbers right and you got much better. You got a decent payout. Maybe the second, third or fourth tier payout kind of deal. And if you're a big game player, maybe you got a number one or two tier payout, depending on how big you play it. So that's the uh, way that I think about uh, how this is uh, played. What I'll probably do, because the markets are closed, I'm going to stop the video now, upload it, and then I'm going to research whatever I can. See, I'll do a search on YouTube on PAO. See if... Uh, it looks like it's a good deal or not, but with this volume, volume often comes at turning points. So, yeah, it looks like uh, it might be something that's worth doing. Again, for buy orders now. Let me just talk about that. I, with Because I'm getting some like decent sales, I'm noticing with a lot of coins, I'm out, I got a couple buy... A lot of times I'll just put one buy order in it because I can only afford so much base currency. And I'm noticing I'm getting a lot of couple in for a lot of coins now. So let's just assume I put a buy order in at previous low here. It's one old number because that's what I would do. This is this hit the one. Previous match is the one. It's an even psychological number. From 15, if you were worth 100 units, well now you would be worth 67. So technically... 
you buy it up. You can buy it up 33. Now you can look at it this way and say, you know what? Okay, I'm going to buy it up, but at this point, I'm happy being worth 90 units instead of 100. So instead of buying 33, I'm going to buy 23. And because I want even numbers, I'm going to take 25. So that's one way of thinking. If, if you care for being the 30, then you might buy, say, 30 instead. I want, I don't want to be quite 100. I want to buy more than what this sell order is. Because that's one thing I'm very common with me. That my buy order, and it all depends on the volatility and how deep or short that I'm going. That means a lot. Especially because I said I bought like $32 worth of, uh, uh, or I sold, I, I, uh, da, da, da. yeah, I bought $32 worth of Bitcoin. That's after I sold like 50 something before my last update. But I played for a higher low, so I bought less. But it's just based on the numbers game because of such. And another example of it is say, yeah, I don't want to buy at the uh, one. I want to buy lower low. Okay, so I want to buy seven, five or whatever, half off. So now your 100 wouldn't be worth 67, it would be worth 50. So now you'd almost have to buy your entire balance over to bring it up to where it is. And however you want to do it that way, that's totally fine to do. But if I'm going to be buying and I want to put like a nice, in, like say for example, my plan from here is I'm going to buy at 10. Then I'm going to buy at say 0.6 or 7, somewhere around there, say 7. I'm not going to put my buy order in 7. I'm going to put it in around 1 or 2 instead in case something insane happens and it goes way down. And then I'll get a much better buy. But if the message of the market later states that it's going there, I'll buy. And one way of it's showing you that is, okay, this happens. You got a notification that your buy order hits. Okay, so what am I going to do at this spot? I'm going to delete these sell orders and replace three new ones. I'm going to delete that buy order below as well. That seven number, well, now I'll put the buy order for it and then maybe put one at the one handle or seven X lower than that. And then by having that insane buy order, when you get the really extreme ones going down, it can enable you to get a great buy, especially if you're doing like seven, 10, whatever X lower. Because oftentimes you're going to get the situation of two different ways that's going to profit magnificently with the best one being the instant one, where you have a move that looks like this, with a red candle looking like this, not much of a move. Price action was here when you went to work or whatever you were doing. And then you had your buy order here. Next thing you know, it's back to where it came from and you just bought 100 units, four times cheaper or whatever it was than the price action is. So now you can make an instant sale and readjust your portfolio and you got a good, good great play. Or you have the situation of a market capitulation. And this is thus rare if you're talking about a 7x move. This is almost impossible. But even for even some decent moves, like 2 or 3x moves or whatever. Say you, uh, well, let's just do a good level here. Say, for example, you have a buy order, say, here. But the price action is moving to this point here at, at normal spots. Well, because of major high volume and large capitulation, for the three or so minutes, people sell aggressively and a move happens down here that does this. That can happen as well, especially when you're playing with the lower size, not as common markets, which again, another reason why I like the BNB. The numbers look funny now after I switch the scale because this is written in my normal handwriting here. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. And like always, everything's your own risk, own reward for investing choices you make. I simply am talking about my strategy, sharing it really. For me, risk reward management is always job number one, which is the same as portfolio management really for the same thing. Take care. Bye-bye.